Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, those things we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, Betty Rock went and saw a movie. Was it called Afterlife? After Death. After Ooh. Death. Okay, because I actually want to go see this. Uh, you said it was done by the people who did The Chosen. And just briefly uh, describe what it was a documentary of. So it's about multiple people sharing their near-death experience. What killed them? And then what their experience was after they died, whether they went to heaven or to hell. And they had um, atheistic people. They also had Christian people on there uh, sharing their experiences. And there was a lot that I learned from it. Um, I, I would say I would say it was a good it was a good uh, movie to see for sure. Uh, one thing that stuck with me. Well, a lot of things stuck with me. But one of them, uh, there's this guy that he got real bad sick um, and didn't make it. So he passed and he found himself uh, going to hell. He was following these entities, these dark entities. um, And eventually they started ripping him apart. And he, they're saying, you know, he's about to enter into hell. And at that very moment, he screams out, God, you have to save me because I can't help. I can't save myself. And immediately he was saved. Like he went straight to heaven and then he got to experience uh, somewhat of what heaven was like. Um, But one of those, one of the things that stuck out to me about that was, you know, a lot of people will say, how can a loving God let his creation, his children that he claims to love so much go to hell and then spend eternity there. Um, But if that's true, like that man's experience, does that mean that, God is like, yeah, I don't want you to spend eternity in hell, and I am going to give you to the very bitter end to change your ways. And that even means when you're about to be dragged into hell, you still can call out, and he can still save you even from that far away. Yeah, I've always thought about that, and I've always hoped that that is the case, but we have no proof of that. There's no like biblical justification for that. But the only thing I do know is that God is constantly pursuing us, so why would he give up right at the end, you know? And like sometimes when you're in a car accident, for example, and you say, my life have passed before my eyes, all these things happen in a nanosecond, a mm-hmm. split second. And so like this guy's body dies, but then he's still kind of in that whatever realm. And, you know, does God give you that last opportunity to see me finally mm-hmm. and call out to me and you, you will be saved, you know? And I'm really curious if that is reality i hope it is because there are people that you know they spend their whole life blinded to it and then they're confronted with it and and you still would have the option too at that point too like no i hate you you know and yeah and 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 there's some people that would probably choose that right and i was talking with my parents about it and i told them i said you know i don't know if it says i don't think it does say anything in the bible where i mean it does say in the in the bible there's something that's like even in the depths there, I'm seen by you. Right. So, you know, we can't get away from him. So then wouldn't it just be like God for him to wait just at the very end? Like you still have a moment. And I think, and that's what I told my mom and dad, I said, there could be a chance that we get to heaven and we're going to be shook to our core by the people that are there. Oh, for sure. Um, Because if that's the case, the people that are going to end up in hell are the ones that were like, no, I would rather be torn right. limb from limb right. than to accept your grace, your mercy, and your love. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could totally see standing up there and be like, holy cow, rocks here. What in the oh, world? Okay. Yeah. No, but I mean, honestly, I think you're right. I think that... that we will. I think, regardless of whether this is true or not, I still think there are people you'll be shocked that are there because you see somebody that lived their whole life that doesn't look anything like Christ, but they were at some vacation Bible school when they were a kid and got saved, you know. And mm. I do believe that once saved, always saved, and you can kind of backslide and do all this other stuff, um, but that you know that gift doesn't go away. Mm. And so I, I do think that will be people just by that basis that will be surprised are there. Well, I think we'd celebrate it though. Too. Oh, absolutely! Like yeah, we won't that, go. That's not fair. Yeah, we're not going to sit up there and be like, "No way." Some people but, will, but I would say, like, you think about those families that have lost a loved one due to murder, mm-hmm. you know, and and these people that committed the murder are in jail. Yeah, you know, and so 
they have a chance to go to heaven. That's there's a chance that you could see your own murderer. Oh yeah, in absolutely. heaven or absolutely. that family that could never forgive that person. Well, now you got to spend eternity with them because yeah. God forgave him. And another thing too was that um, through the whole process, uh, all the people that experienced heaven, they were like, "I did not want to come back." And so even one man had. A wonderful life. He he even admitted it. He was like, I have two beautiful children. I knew I would never get to walk my daughter down the aisle. I knew I would never get to see my son graduate, like all these things. But he said, still, and I cannot explain to you, I did not want to come back. Wow. And he went into a deep depression once he got back, which his wife couldn't understand, but they worked through that. And another thing, uh, a woman, she drowned and she said that when she went to heaven, she saw the... Uh, how her actions and her words uh, took effect three, threefold, thirtyfold. Like she could see how she said something to this one person that hurt them. So then they hurt someone else. Then that person hurt someone else. Like it just keeps going right. and going. That would so be you powerful. Kinda, yeah. So you would kind of have that grief or shame over what you've done. Um, Cause we are supposedly going to stand accountable for what we've right. done and be shown what we did, which always felt weird to me right before entering heaven. Oh, by the way, hey, congratulations. We're happy you're here. We're going to show you why you were such a horrible person and then come into joy. You know, like that always felt like weird timing to me. And, yeah. And I think we're, all, we're also, um, we're trying to imagine what heaven is like. But we by, can't. By, yeah. By our limited view. Um, another thing that I liked was, all the people that had experienced these near-death experiences, um, the scientists were saying every one of them, whatever they were pursuing before that experience, they completely dropped. And all they cared about was loving on others and sharing mm-hmm. their experiences. Um, I mean, I, I guess that's how like a real encounter with God should be. It, you know, nothing else should matter, I right. guess, at that point. So. And there were some skeptics that were like, you know, some have asked are these people hallucinating, right. which is possible. Uh, As but, your brain is shutting down, it's releasing all these things. Right. And yeah. Right. But uh, there was one woman that she talked about her near-death experience. She had a brain aneurysm that, I w- that was at the base of her mm-hmm. brain. And doctors have this thing where they pretty much put your life on pause. And pretty much what they do is they drain all the blood from your body. They stop. So weird. They stop any brain activity. They stop your heart. Like you are pretty much dead, mm. but you're just hooked up to machines. They have something like headphones in your ears that uh, make this clicking sound. They put tape over your eyes. Like you cannot see, hear anything. And this woman is getting this brain surgery done. And she has a near-death experience, experience, tells them what she experienced and all this stuff. And she even goes on to tell them what the doctors were talking about in the operating room as they were operating on her, the instruments that they used, all this stuff. And she had no medical experience whatsoever. So then you're like, can you hallucinate that right. vividly? Right. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm, so I, then is it true? I get the skeptics saying that this is what your brain is doing and it sends you. But there's so many people that have shared similar experiences, mm-hmm. which I think is kind of uh, weird, too. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to go see it. I I don't know where I land on all of it, you know, but it would be really interesting. You said it was by the people that did The Chosen, too, but it mm-hmm. doesn't feel like super religious. Okay. No, it's more of a documentary, I would yeah. say. All right, well, there you go. Something to maybe go see this weekend. Um, this uh, This headline stuck out to me, and I thought, oh, this is interesting. One-armed tennis... Uh, table tennis player eyes both Olympics and Paralympics and I'm like wow that's incredible so they want to make both teams a little greedy but uh, they want to make both teams like one arm table tennis player but then as I thought about it like for a second I'm like that's not that big of a deal because you don't need both hands in table tennis I mean you could hold the ball in one hand serving would be the only thing like, you'd have to hold it in the one hand, drop it, and hit it real fast. Maybe he holds it in his mouth. And yeah, oh, that it. would be good, too. But, like, that's the only thing. Other than that, that's you don't. That's the only thing. Yes. Could you do that? Yes. You don't need you the. Can, yeah, I, mean, I can't. You don't need the other going, arm once it's going, for table tennis. It's just table like, tennis. Like, like, I was like, okay. Now, one-legged hurdler, if that had been a headline, <laughs> I, I, can't, I take no issue with that. One-legged pole, one-arm pole vaulter? Absolutely you are, tough. You are, you are the people that everyone can't stand. You're like, here's someone that. Has overcome their disability, and you're like, 
I, I could do that. It just, well, it just hit me though, because because at first I was like, "Dang, that's super impressive." Oh, it's not that big of a deal actually. No, <laughs> but they're making well. the big deal. But again, one ar- one legged uh, hurdler. That's impressive. So, Betty, you know how I'm very skeptical about Christian movies, at least the ones I'm not in. Uh, <laughs> of course. You uh, yeah. So I got invited to see the movie Journey to Bethlehem, which is a musical about the birth of Christ. So right there, flags Ooh. go up. I know, right? That's what I thought. But then I started thinking, they turned the story of Alexander Hamilton into a hit musical. So why not the story of Jesus? It should be better, right? Yeah. So I go to an advanced screening of the movie Journey to Bethlehem. And I have to tell you, at first I was like, when they started off singing right out of the gate, I'm like, uh oh, here we go. <laughs> and uh, I really, as I leaned into it and, and went with it, I'm like, man, this is actually really good. I really enjoyed it. If you loved High School Musical, Camp Rock, Glee, you and your family will love it because the guy who did a lot of the music for those shows, Adam Anders, directed and did all the music for Journey to Bethlehem. Oh, he we're actually, all in this together. We'll be singing the songs from Journey to Bethlehem like that too. <laughs> the movie stars Antonio Banderas as Herod, and I gotta tell you, Joel Smallbone plays his son, and he holds his own with him scene for scene. He was amazing. I wonder why they didn't ask you to be in it. I don't know. Maybe because we're all in this <laughs> together. That's why. Now yeah, I see that's it. it. So if you want to check out the movie or learn more about it, it's Journey to Bethlehem Movie dot com. Uh, what do you got, Lady Rock? So <laughs> Halloween, we just got through it, and um, there are a couple of celebrities that are getting some heat over their co- their costumes. One of them, I think they're stretching. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I'll I'll tell you that one first. Chloe uh, Kardashian. So she's one of, of course, the Kardashian sisters. She and Kim Kardashian and two of their friends dressed as the brat dolls. You know, those little mm, dolls yeah, yeah. that are very, like, big eyes and yeah. all this stuff. Anyways, one of them, one of the dolls is Hispanic. And that's the one that Chloe dressed up as. And some are claiming that it looks like she darkened her skin to wear that outfit. <laughs> now, I've seen pictures. There's no way. And I don't think she does. She says a tan. Yeah, I think people are reaching. Now, she could have gone and gotten a spray tan. Sure, she probably but did. But she always gets a spray right. tan, yeah, I'm she, sure. Well, she does. So I think that's a reach. Yeah, you're culturally stealing their, your st- a cultural appropriation. But now, I mean, okay, let's talk about this. You go, you look at all these roles that were historically white people's roles, and there are black people doing those roles. You could be, but no one says cultural uh, cultural appropriation on that. They're like equality, you know. So like we're like, it, well, uh, how wait, is are it? you saying like there? I haven't seen any African American paint their face white. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not saying that like doing paint white face, but going as another like because well, people would yeah. give kids a hard time about going as a different. Uh, race, uh-huh. in essence, because you're stealing their culture. It's uh-huh. like, no, that's just, uh, it doesn't matter. Didn't somebody get Like, upset? getting a spray tan to go is that? I don't think that's a big deal. I get going in white face, or, you know, black face is yeah. a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, I get that, but I don't think that this is an issue. Would you think it's a problem, though, if, like, a, a black person painted their face white? I wouldn't care. That's the funny thing. Like I don't. I don't care. And but and the and the thing is, no one else would care because you couldn't care. Right. You wouldn't be allowed to care. You'd have to be like, I love that. Let's support that <laughs> because otherwise, you are a massive racist. You know, there's a double standard when it comes to race that is palpable these days. So, um, what was the other one? Uh, the other one. Yes, that was. She's on um, a show called Poop Creek. Oh, yeah. Um, and her name is Emily Ham- Hampshire. So Emily, she dressed as Johnny Depp this year. Oh. And you would think, oh, well, that's not a big deal. Yeah. Well, she, if you followed the court documentation oh, of Johnny Amber Depp Heard. and Amber Heard, yeah. then you know that Amber Heard <laughs> is accused of yes. doing a number two yes. on Johnny Depp's <laughs> bed because okay. she was mad at him. So yeah. Emily Hampshire, when she dressed up as Johnny Depp, she's wearing this suit and she puts in okay. the shirt for pocket. For the record, I'm sorry I asked. A number uh, yes. two. Okay. For okay. The record, and so I'm people sorry. are being... Hurt by this, they're like. Who's being hurt? By I don't this? know. People that follow her on social media, <laughs> they're cares? like, I'm offended. Like this is a serious situation, a serious allegation, and you shouldn't be making Just light of eat it. Some candy. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's it's none of your business. <laughs> Honestly, it's none Here, of your business. Here's what I'll say. I don't think that's a big deal. The Emily one, uh, and when it comes to Khloe Kardashian being Hispanic, 
I think you're I think you're reaching too far. That's kind of like when those people call here and they're like, "How dare you play a Toby Mac song where he cusses?" Right. Read the room. Right. Common sense says he that's didn't not a possibility. Right. And I think Khloe Kardashian knows enough to know. Sure. Don't do that. Right. Like I don't think she's that. Uh, that Oblivious. hidden under a rock. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's people just want to be upset. They want to have their 15 minutes, too. And so it's easy to do that by picking apart everybody else. Uh, what do you got for the old birthdays? Uh, remember, this is our last uh, aftercast for a little bit because we're going into sport drive starting tomorrow. Yeah, um, I have one birthday. I would like to point out that um, I've had some people be like, oh, another another week where they're not doing aftercast or yeah. podcast. I know. It is know. frustrating. But I would like to remind you that there are plenty of podcasts that I listen to where they do one a week. Right, right, that's right. True. And that's so true. while it I I think we I think we not that I'm calling you spoiled, but I'm saying we have <laughs> spoiled you a bit because when they told Wally, Hey, it'd be great to do an aftercast, Wally's like, Well then we're gonna do it every day. Yeah. Like he's got he has to go full throttle. Right. And so when we miss a week or they're like somebody will say Gosh, you took another week off. Like how many weeks did they? We give weren't you? on vacation no, for the record. Well, well, it's <laughs> work trips and, and things like that, and well, we and I that, think you don't even realize that there are like the the people that put out a weekly podcast. They have the same amount of vacation time. It's just that you don't notice it as much because right. they're doing one a week. And you're right. you're trained to be ready for the one a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also just as a like yeah, we're off next week. Uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, later and Christmas, this month, and yeah. then Christmas, you know, you guys are we're out for right. So support and, drive starts on Friday, yeah, and so tomorrow, and then we're out all next week with support drive. I trust me, and trust me when I say this. I would much rather do two podcasts every day <laughs> than do support drive. Like it but is, <laughs> we got to pay the bills, right? And that's how we are able to do uh, the podcast is because the radio show is where the vast majority of the money that keeps us being able to do this comes from and so that is what we have to do. Well and two I've had maybe five people reach out asking where we are and come to find out that they're all in Portland. Nah we lost oh, Portland. So yeah. Tough. And I hated so that. while you might not like support drive the real thing is is we're not being heard in Portland anymore because we couldn't make the funds to do it. Right so it wasn't supported enough so it went away and we so, always talk about that like if you right. like it, support it, if not it could go away. That was Portland's story and so yeah I had to feed through a bunch of emails about that too and mm-hmm. like tell people hey you can listen on the Aftercast for free, you can get the podcast or yeah. the uh, podcast you can stream it but yeah I hate that we lost a signal. But we yeah. do love when people give and mention that they are podcasts. Yeah I do love that. And get them a little shout out. You guys are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah you guys are great man. Like I Again, like I think doing the podcast, the aftercast here is what's keeping me here a little bit too some days uh, because I don't like how restrictive things are on the radio as much. Um, and so this is a, a wonderful Like he would place. be with a girl, he doesn't like to be restricted. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like to be told Thanks. no. Yes. Oh, gosh. Exactly. Yes. I don't like that image. Skims. Skims, 100%. All right, well, that's going to do it, no, and I apologize. Not. We you have, have some question? birthdays. Why don't we get that <laughs> oh, done? Oh, yeah, we never did the actual. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. For- uh, Emily, she said she's celebrating her birthday today. Happy Yay, birthday, Emily. Emily. Hey, Emily. She said, I've been listening to The Wally Show for more than a decade. Wow, that's amazing. Through the good and bad, highs and lows of life, yeah. Wally, Betty, and Gavin are a constant source of joy for me. That's so sweet. That is nice. Uh, she said, I have a request. A request. Right. I've waited for my birthday to ask Wally for a quick young Betty Lou impression on air. His Betty oh. and Mama talks oh. get me every time. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> so I guess what she would yes. request is for you to wish her a happy birthday, but in the Betty, the Lou, Betty Lou Mama type talk. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Okay. Um, what, what's her name again? Emily? Emily. Okay. Hi, Emily. How are you doing today, precious? Oh, my gosh. You are just so great. And you don't look a day over whatever day you're turning. Not at all, because you are absolutely amazing. And you know what? You go, girl. You can just do anything that you want to do, because you are uh, amazing. And you're sweet, and you're kind, and we all just love you so, so much. Bless your heart. (laughs) Well done. Thank you. Okay. All right. We want to wish everybody... Thank you for listening. But Upon farewell. You have to do it. Like oh, like like Chloe Kardashian.
Uh, you know that should be Gavin doing this. That's I cannot. Right, I cannot Gavin! do it. I, oh. I can, say Kardashian. Yeah, I wish I could do mm, that Kardashian? voice well. Uh, yeah, see, you do it really like, well. Like this is just giving me life. Am yeah. I? Am I right? Like this, I'm speaking my truth. Okay, and you can't be mad about that. Yeah. See, I can't do that. Gavin, can. thank you guys so much for being a potty. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.